Thanks for inviting me to elaborate on my submission to the COG-PI workshop. I'll briefly explain a little bit about why I'm skeptical about the vision of cognitive personal informatics. As an overarching vision, personal informatics can be really great. Uh, over the last decade, we've seen a huge transition in tracking from hackers and data scientists in the early 2010s as part of the quantified self movement to everyday use of fitness wearables and smartphone apps today. And wearables and apps have been around for a while now. Uh, so I'm excited to hear that researchers are thinking hard about what the next generation of tracking devices what might look like and what sorts of capabilities they might provide. Uh, cognitive personal informatics is a strong candidate given the rise in EEG headsets and interest in tracking in that domain. Uh, but overall, I'm still pretty skeptical that people will find cognitive personal informatics to be useful. Um, as someone who studies personal tracking in, in people's everyday lives, uh, I question a little bit that, that everyday people will, will end up finding value in that sort of tracking technology. Uh, and I have three main reasons why I'm a little bit skeptical. Uh, first and foremost, cognitive personal informatics is lacking a clear definition of what might be a good metric to monitor. Uh, thinking back to early fitness wearables, uh, Fitbit's centered step counts. Uh, steps are, are a deeply flawed measure of how active we are. They miss out on things like weightlifting and aerobics. Uh, and, and kind of conversely to that, there were, there were other devices that came out at the time, uh, like Nike's Fuel Band, which accounted for these activities a little bit better. Uh, they, Nike used a more holistic measurement of fuel, which uh, measured any form of movement. Uh, so like uh, moving around your wrist or carrying boxes as well as, as running or other forms of physical activity. Uh, but people didn't have a particularly good mental model of what this much more abstract measure actually meant uh, where society has has decided what uh, it took to take a step long before wearables came around. So we have kind of a pre, pre existing understanding of that. And even though the metric is flawed, uh, we still understand what it means. Uh, and I worry that cognitive personal informatics is going to fall into a similar sort of trap. Uh, second is that step tracking often follows, or self tracking in general, often follows a framework of setting goals and monitoring progress towards them. Uh, my guess is that people often don't have explicit goals for cognitive processes. Uh, instead, people view them more as a means toward other sorts of goals like creativity or productivity. People set goals like I want to be creative today or I want to work hard today. Uh, and these sorts of measures may be better measured through other means, such as trying to uh, determine how much output creatively or, or towards productivity that people might have. Um, and, and other sorts of technologies like monitoring screen time or, or, or other techniques um, might end up being better served that rather than, than monitoring people's cognitive goals directly. Uh, third, uh, when this sort of technology reaches maturity and is kind of widely available, uh, I think it's kind of inevitable that it's gonna end up getting exploited. Um, I think in the best case scenario, people will use the technology to better understand themselves and their habits. Uh, and this is great. This is the, the model and, and kind of the vision of a lot of personal informatics. Um, but I worry that, that kind of the bigger use case is going to be for more powerful institutions like employers uh, to force the sub their subordinates, like their workers, to use the technology as part of monitoring or evaluating performance. Uh, and I think I think we see similar sorts of things uh, bearing out in other ways in which screen time is is now being tracked in workplaces or you know can be tracked in workplaces, um, that sort of thing. We've seen this sort of technology get exploited in the past, um, and I think once we start moving into an even more uh, potentially close to people and more invasive space, uh, we we just kind of perpetuate that's those concerns further. Um, I think the lens of lived informatics or, or thinking more about the role of tracking technology in everyday life uh, can be helpful for finding uh, real value in cognitive personal informatics uh, and hopefully avoiding some of these more negative outcomes. I think if we're if we're prioritizing how to make tracking be helpful for for people and kind of their everyday lives and their everyday experiences, we can uh, create cognitive tracking technologies which uh, better align with people's needs and their expectations. Uh, thanks, and I look forward to chatting more with this group.